Hello, welcome to Footprint. My name is Samuel Atamensa. And in this episode, we have two giants, and I, I can freely call them giants because of what we are going to talk about. And I'm talking about Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams and Reverend Dr. Mama Marquee. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll open all the floodgates. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is Footprint. And um, I have Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams and Reverend Dr. Mama Marque. Indeed, this is the first time, if you've been um, a viewer or a listener of this program, that I'm having to um, speak with two people at the same time. Uh, because um, I, 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 I have found myself in this space for the last 30, 35 years. And, um, at times it gets a bit hazy, you know, because you hear too many voices, everybody making different claims, and um, at times we get confused. So the whole idea is to take a walk through this charismatic um, pathway and then see what is supposed to be, how it used to be, what is supposed to be, and where we are heading. Because at times we hear too many people calling themselves prophets and they, they speak with some voice like that. But we don't know, you know. So, Archbishop, it's good to have you. Very honored to be here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Reverend Marquis, yeah, yeah. Um, I, 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 I thank you too for coming. I'm grateful. Yeah. So, uh, listeners, bear with me. Um, I, I, I will be referring to Archbishop as Papa, and, and I, I, just bear with me, because that's how we call him, yeah. and, um, you know, so those of you who nickname me Papa, according to the who name we call him, now you have the real Papa here. <laughs> <laughs> Archbishop, so, we, we, one day we woke up and we heard the word charismatic, charismatic in the system. And uh, most young people associate you with this charismatic thing. Um, can you walk us through your own journey of the Pentecostal charismatic um, work that you have done um, so that we can see how we put that in context? Uh, thank you. Uh, I came out from the Church of Pentecost, where after I got saved and born again on the bed of affliction, I was introduced to the Church of Pentecost uh, by the Aqua Sisters, their twins, nurses, uh, who uh, were right there when I got born again at, the, at Kolibu, Ward H, at, on the bed of affliction. And so they directed me to the Church of Pentecost at uh, Kanishi. And that was where I went in there and uh, experienced um, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and could make sense of the experience I had on the bed of affliction. Mm. Then one day I was sitting in a friend of mine's house um, at Kanishi and watching television and I saw this preacher on television and I've never heard a preacher preach that way. Mm. I mean it was like the presence of God was right in the sitting room where I sat the accuracy, the tenacity, the audacity, and the insight, the revelation of the scriptures, it came so alive to me. And then I said to myself, I would like to be like this man. Wow. And uh, I had the inner witness within me, the Holy Spirit spoke from within and said, you can be like him. Go see him and he will tell you what to do. So after the program, I started making calls and I was told that he had a church and an office in uh, Ringway. And so I went to his church, Redemption Hour at that time, he used to have a television program mm -hmm. uh, called Redemption Hour in those days. So as soon as I came out of the taxi and I stepped into the compound, I saw this huge guy, the same guy, he was coming down. Uh, to the sitting room to go to Nigeria, to go to Benin City. And so I walked in and I said, Sir, the Lord asked me to come and see you. Mm. And he said, about what? And I said, he said, you will tell me what to do. I just got saved, born again. 
and I need direction. And he said, God hasn't told me anything about you. And I said, so why don't you ask him? Then he said, okay, you leave your information and go. So I did. And a uh, few weeks after I had a letter, uh, I've been given scholarship to come to Benin City to study Whoa. Uh, the Bible. So who's this man again? Idahosa. Oh, Archbishop Idahosa, blessed memory. So he had a church in Ghana. Yeah, he did. And he used to live in Ghana as no, well? No, he, he used to come and, and go. Right, right. So I went to Benin City. And um, the Lord said to me at that time when I went, he said, he's your Bible school, study him. Watch him, that's your Bible school. Watch the way he prays. Watch the audacity of his faith in me. How he deals with the enemy. Let me ask, how long did it take you to go to Bible school from when you got born again? Uh, it took me uh, about two years. Okay. Yeah, okay. about two years. So within this period, you were still visiting the Church of Pentecost? No, I, I attended the Church of Pentecost, but I was preaching in the villages. With which uh, experience? I was preaching in the villages, all over the place, just giving my testimonies. Ooh. And I'll go to some of the schools and things, I cry, cry and places and give my testimony. Wow. But yeah. who trained you then? At the time? The, the Bible and the Holy Spirit. Oh, wow. I just but, followed. I go to church and I hear the preaching. And I also go and preach what I hear from church. That's it. That's it. Oh, was it Mary Villas? No, this was Kanishi number Kanishi one. Number one. Okay. Yeah. Kanishi number one. Yeah. yeah. At that time, it was Elder Saki. He was Elder the presiding. Oh yeah, yeah. Presiding Elder, Elder and then Major yeah. Diadem. Oh yeah. You kept you kept your relationship with them for many years. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, but again, mm -hmm. you know, um, you 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 seem to have a certain flexibility for language mm -hmm. because I've heard you you know make statements in in the northern language my mom felt that if she took me out of Accra outside of Accra that could help me because of my age and everything to go to school and so she applied for trans transfer and she was sent to Wa Wa and so I lived in Wa in a place called Wapani you what? know and Dondoli and she tried to put me at the school at Jejerehiri, a place called Jejerehiri. So that was when I learned Wala and... Uh, so Wapani? Yeah. Jejerehiri? Yeah, and Dondoli. And you lived there? Yeah, yeah, I lived there. You remember which years you did, you're talking about? No, I was, I was young. Yeah. So this would be late 60s? Um... Yeah, around around the middle sixties, mid sixties. Wapani. Yeah, there was no light. No, 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 no. Hey, so you lived in Wa. Yes. And you learned their language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was. Uh, oh, you learned how's that too from yeah. there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So your ex experience in the north would be just Wa, or you went to other no, places? No, from Wa we moved to Bolgatanga. Okay. You know, and so uh, upper east to that. Uh, yeah, I, I, I lived at Bolga and then. So, Bolga proper. Yeah, yeah, I lived at Bolga at the. Just before the government transport, they have these estates there. Yeah. So I lived there with my mom and. Uh, the small, small yeah, estates. Those estates, yeah. right before the government transport and before the police head office. Mm -hmm. uh, just before uh, East Sudana Best Church. Okay. I, I used to live there. Wow. You know? And I used to push truck and sell graphic. And As everything. in commercial trucks. No, 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 my own truck. You know, I sell, uh, I used to sell uh, uh, newspapers? newspapers to make money for myself. Wow. To earn money. Papa, and you're doing my mother, say too. My, my mother couldn't support me, and I was young, and uh, I wasn't with my father. Life was tough and difficult, so I have to find ways to make money. So I'm sure your truck it was very stylish. You <laughs> branded it nicely. The Accra Boy truck. <laughs> <Akra boy. laughs> uh, That's classic. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. so. Well, so this gives us so a I good learned a little, I learned fra fra to wow. where I lived in Volga. Yeah. But many, many years after, I'm sure when somebody speaks some of these languages, mm -hmm. you can pick what they are saying. Oh, yeah, I can pick, and there are some too that I still remember. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you want to tell me to hurry up, how do you say it? Uh, I cannot say that, but I know some of the great things, like in Wala, uh, in the morning, you say things like. Uh, Ansuma, Antere, Anula, Idiabisum. How are you? 
it will be so, uh, and then in Wala too, you have things like uh, Bulika, yeah. you know, and then uh, they have different. So I, I remember the greetings, and mm. then I can also remember some of the things they say. I can pick it. Wow. You know, but wow. over the years, uh, I course, lost all those. Of course, of course. So we, are, we have Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams here, and um, we just have to pick a little background. But at this point, he's at Benin City in the Bible School. We hold it right here and come to uh, Reverend Dr. Mama Marque. Reverend, um, you, you happen to be the generation that came after um, Archbishop, is that correct? Yes, um, Archbishop was, what was it, was it 70? 76? 76. 76. Okay, yeah. Um, so the generation after the Pentecostals, I mean, this is the gradation in terms of church. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, we had the Orthodox, and then the uh, visitation by Makion started the Ghana uh, Apostolic, okay. you know, and then it broke up. Um, and then it became Church of Pentecost and then other apostolic churches with different, different, uh, some of the products of uh, Makion uh, were uh, Brother Lawson, Divine Healers. Oh, just, really? Yeah. Not Brother just, Lawson? Yeah, 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 Brother Lawson. Yes, and, uh, yeah, yes, yeah, Abu yeah, Nusam, yeah. he was like, uh, wow. yeah, 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 and John, John, yeah, and then Prophet John, uh, Prophet John, yeah. Mesa, John Mesa, you know, yeah, yeah. and then uh, there were challenges uh, regarding the famous uh, Ochibentua uh, issue. I mm -hmm. mean, regarding healing, yeah, uh, you know, and yeah. then there was a split. After the split, I mean, Church of Pentecost then uh, took on another dimension. But then other churches, the splinter churches from Makion, mm -hmm. uh, also began to gain footing, like Christ Apostolic, blah, blah, blah. But it was more into the Pentecostal field. Yeah. And uh, it, was, it was very um, limited, but very effective and very powerful. They had branches almost everywhere. But then came in the 70s, in the mid-70s, to the uh, late 70s, there was an outbreak of the charismatic renewal. That is, God took uh, the, the 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 power and all the out of enclosed four walls and splashed it. It was a typical example of in the last days I poured my spirit upon all flesh, and uh, there was that is where the charismatic renewal uh, movement then started. Okay. So the charismatic renewal movement started, and there were different, different, different people, mm -hmm. of course. I mean, Archbishop was there. In, in actual fact, for him, you can locate the upsurge of the charismatic churches. You know. But the charismatic experience was you hear people like uh, uh, John Osefrie, Osefrie, Anoka Gozo, um, mm. what do we call it, Isaac Ababio, mm. and uh, Abraham DeLove, and mm. then um, yes. this other, uh, I've forgotten some mm -hmm. of the names. Mm -hmm. but. They were more like organizing prayer meetings. Organize. In fact, Pawili was mm -hmm. also uh, the late Pawili William of Yeah, the they also politician. had a fellowship. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then, when the charismatic renewal movement broke out, it became like free for all. It was a great influx of, and that gave the young people who were then asking questions: Is mm -hmm. that what Christianity is about? Is that what churches? You know, churches were very apart from Church of Pentecost. You see any? were beating drums. Uh, of Pentecost and Assemblies of God. Uh, assemblies and then, of God, uh, yeah. You wouldn't hear or you see anything like that. Church. Yeah, an apostolic church. Uh, the Presbyterian churches are uh, very rigid, you know. I came from a Presbyterian background. That's so, Labadi Presbyterian. Yeah, La Presbyterian. Yeah, La Nativity. Yeah, yeah no, but, but Nativity is Bethel. 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 <laughs> Basi. And when the guy, man, Labadi man, say Basili. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so with a at best of the charismatic you know, movement, mm. Holy Ghost baptism, deliverance, you know, prayer, uh, giftings, you know, we're going to oh, see okay. the manifestations of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which, of the Holy Ghost, which was not uh, before. Uh, yeah, before. You could spread. only see them in Church of Pentecost, you could only see them in Assemblies of God, uh, uh, but, I mean, and the other places. But With you different see, measures. Yeah, and even that one, you know, in, in some places, for example, I was in uh, the Sophia Makion Temple. I mean, it, just near my house. Oh, you also went through Church of Pentecost? A little bit. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. but I never saw 
manifestations like they were doing, they were having at Kanishi Fest. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. they, it wasn't like that. Number one. Yeah. yeah. It was just one or two people who during worship will just get up and then speak in tongues, I mean, heavy duty tongues, and then somebody will <laughs> interpret. And whilst all of us are cowering in fear, I mean, that was what we were seeing. But truthfully, we're not seeing it in, but with the upsurge of the charisma, it broke out. It looks yeah. like the walls were broken. God took uh, his move out of the four walls okay, so and Reverend, put it me, out there on Reverend the street. Marquee, tell me yourself, yeah. what was your progression? Yeah, so my progression was from uh, a strict Presbyterian, you know, mm -hmm. raised in a Presbyterian home. And of course, they, they, they uh, booted me straight into the Presbyterian uh, school. school. You know, so this is my progression. Mm -hmm. But then, in the outbreak of the charismatic renewal, then fellowships began to pop up. Yeah. Fellowships began to pop up. And some of the fellowships we had in those days, we had like uh, evangelical fellowships. Okay. But when the outbreak of the charismatic renewal movement, the, uh, there was an invasion of charismatic practices, beliefs into some of the fellowships. Some of them were kicked out, you know, because they couldn't hold it. And of course, I understand sometimes you can't put new wine into old wine skins. Okay. And so with the outburst, some people were kicked out. So they began to form fellowships. Now, some of these fellowships, they were all over the place. I mean, uh, Ghana Evangelical Society, mm -hmm. uh, Wonder Square by Bram de Love, and all the uh, Reverend John Osefre used to do Yes Camp. Parachurch. Uh, yeah, parachurch. Yeah, parachurch yeah. organizations. Mm. So all these parachurch organizations, and out of that came groups like uh, Calvary Road. So my progression from the Presbyterian Church, then um, Presec issue that was brutally charismatic mm -hmm. then out of presec uh, uh issue, scripture union, yeah, yeah scripture union mm -hmm. with some of the uh, people with a few people from legon the birth of cover road and that was now something that we could identify with we would go back to our churches on sundays mm -hmm. uh, but then between mondays and saturdays we we're fully occupied with this we were not into churches. It was more of fellowships. Right. And they had different, different things like drama, singing, prayer warriors, counseling. But then, at the onset of um, the charismatic church, it was when he came back. People had tried in their own way. It was not very settled. But when he came back, Who's the, he? that is Archbishop, okay, okay. came back from Nigeria, the hottest place to be <laughs> was Christian Action Center, where Asking faith ministers at um, uh, students hostel. hostel, and some of my mates and some of my friends who were also very close to him, like Ramios Musasa. I mean, that place was was buzzing. So it no. gave. Although, you know, let me uh, uh, <laughs> hold it right there. Yeah. I'm sure they they say you came back and then changed the face of this whole thing. Yeah, we'll put it that way. Yeah. Um, what experience did you garner from Benin City that will cause this whole change? <clears throat> For me, like I said, my Bible school was Archbishop Idahosa. Mm -hmm. And um, when I came back from Benin City, I knew that God had called me for something new mm -hmm. and different from the experience I had before when I was in Church of Pentecost. And then, as he said, when I came, I met uh, Reverend Agbozo and... Uh, uh, Ousu Efriye, Isaac Abebiu, mm -hmm. and then at Tema there was uh, the old man, Reverend Mensah, Mensah and all yeah. the others. And um, I, I went to some of them to see if, first of all, I went to James McKeon. Oh, I see. And I told him I've returned from Bible school, mm -hmm. and I wanted to work, I believe I, I was an evangelist. Oh, but you were so young. Yeah. How old yeah. were you when you came back? Um, um, I was about that time... 24, 25? Less, no, I, no. Was, I was less than that. Younger than that. Are Younger you than that. Either approaching 20 yeah. or early 20. Yes. Let me sit well. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you yeah. mean you were, <laughs> you were a teenager? I was. Yeah. I was. And then you were audacious. Very. You, you know. mean you could go to them yeah, and I went tell to James them. I, I went to him and I told no, him. Tell me about that experience. School. Yeah. And I believe I was called to be an evangelist. So I wanted to work with the Church of Pentecost. And he said, Pentecost have had a bad experience with evangelists. So they don't encourage evangelists in, in, in the Church of Pentecost. At that time. Yeah. At that time. So he said, you know what, I'll pray for you, for God to guide you. So he prayed for me and he asked me to go. So I left. So I went to Benin City. 
Oh, you went back? I went back to Benin City and I told it. I said that, you know, I, I don't know what to do. I believe that I'm called to the ministry, but uh, uh, I went to Church of Pentecost. They wouldn't have me, so I wanted to come and work with Church of God in Nigeria. And uh, he looked at me and he said, the same anointing on me is on you. Go back to Ghana and start something. I said, start what? I don't know what to do. So I came back to Ghana. I went to Agbozo. In Okagbozo, and I said I wanted to work with him, and they had Pana Church organization. They were in the church. Yeah. GS at that yeah. time. Eh? Yeah, Ghana so, Evangelical, Evangelical Society. Society. Yes. Yeah. So um, he said, let me pray. And then after he said, I don't believe God has called you to be with us. So you have to go to God and find out what he's called you to do. <clears throat> so I went to Tema to see Reverend Menson, Menson yeah. the old man, because I used to preach for him before I went to Bible school. So I said, Papa, I'm back, and I believe that uh, <clears throat> I can be of help to your church, because I used to preach in their branches and all that. And he said that uh, he doesn't believe God has called me to full gospel, <laughs> and that I should go and uh, seek God for myself. So I went to Isaac Abbey you know, and he also said the same thing. So everywhere I went, nobody wanted me. And so it was Reverend Mensah that said to me, Nick, why don't you start going to the schools, the secondary school in Ben? Just tell your testimony and, and, and start doing something. So as I, as I went to the schools, you know, and that was where I met uh, uh, people like Isudanaba who got born again. And uh, people and you, like... And you met him? Yeah, him, Bishop <laughs> we Dark. The, we were the first school. Yes, and Bishop <laughs> Dark was then at Achimota. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, so, so, so that's when you were in secondary school. Yes, I was yeah. in sixth form. When, and then when uh, he came to starting his school ministry, in actual fact, he started at Laboni. Laboni was his first. Yeah, oh, Laboni Secondary that's School. That's when you were in form there. I was then mm -hmm. a prefect there. Yeah. So that was when I had known him in was earlier prefect. on. Yeah. But then the secondary school ministry, when he started, so it was, in my, cub it was in my cubicle. Are you serious? Uh, you know, yes. <laughs> so I, I hosted him in the cubicle. And when he said, in Laboni Second, yes, and when he said, well and uh, yes, and when he said <laughs> we should pray, but at that time there was a very big revival going on in Laboni, okay. and um, it was imperative that God was asking us bring him. And so when we went and he came there in my cubicle, the prayer that he prayed, my goodness, I mean, <laughs> and so when we finished prayer, and then he was going in, and then he he asked me, I said. What do you think? Well, what was the atmosphere like? And I looked at him and I said, I, I, you, 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 you are the boss. You go and do your thing. <laughs> and I remember he picked Isaiah 61. And then he began to say, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And then he, all of a sudden he stopped. Then he started telling his story. Yeah. And when he spoke and spoke and spoke, and then he raised his son. And he said, and all that was me, all that is me was this. When he raised his hands, I mean, he spoke about his past. I mean, the whole room went bedlam. Wow. And that was when, when he made an altar call, I've not seen, I mean, I've seen um, uh, Abraham Dillard make an altar call. But that altar call, some of the most hardened criminals <laughs> in, in Laboni, that, who were a, a yeah. problem even to the scripture union, you know, problem to some of us. I mean, they were running to give their life to Christ. And I want to say some of them are now pastors. Wow. In action, for example, you have uh, Reverend uh, Jeremiah Lamte. Jerry? He, yes, Jerry. Osu. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Jerry and then Techi Menson. And then Techi Menson was the, uh, oh, the organic. Wow. Oh, yeah. I mean, those people, I mean, they don't, they don't attend SU for anything. They used to make mockery of us. But that day when he made the altar call, they rush. You know, and so from then, he began to visit other schools. Mm. And mm. he had an appeal for the youth because he gave us an example of what we could be. Mm. He gave us, a, I mean, listen, we can come out of our four walls and experience. And so everybody wanted to fellowship with him. So when we heard of um, action, action yeah. act, act, if yeah. you look at the web, Action. Action, and then look at the the the, uh, the kind of churches we are coming from. Reverend, I'll come back to you. No, cool. <laughs> so you you are hearing Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams and Reverend Dr. Marquis. We are still starting his expedition into uh, secondary schools and uh, later on tertiary uh, institutions, but we will 
take a short break. When we come back, we will see how they, they gave birth to the Action Chapel and what followed after. This is Footprint. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the program. This is Footprint with Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams and Reverend Dr. Mama Marque. Papa, so we, we, we woke up one day and there, there was a church called Action Faith Ministries. Mm -hmm. Action Faith Ministries. And every young person within the Pentecostal charismatic space would make reference to Action Faith Ministries. Um, so why did you eventually start this Action Faith Ministry? Well, uh, as I said, after going around mm. uh, visiting and talking to all these men that were there before I came, and all of them were having parachurch organization, mm -hmm. and then I started going to the schools, mm -hmm. uh, the secondaries, the university, and so everything. So you remember Presec, you remember Laboni? Oh, everywhere, everywhere. And then I realized that uh, I think Dr. Margaret can speak to that because he was one of the people who did invite me with some people to some of the schools but I realized that on Sundays uh, I didn't have a place to go to mm. to give expression to my faith in the context of the charis the charisma of the Holy Spirit where mm -hmm. the charisma of the Spirit where the Holy Spirit is allowed to give expression you know to the gifts to the charismas of the Spirit and so after a while um, there were two prophets that came from Jerusalem, my principal and Mrs. Sinahosa, to my miracle services that I did on Saturday on afternoon. Saturday. Saturday. And yeah. everybody, it was the hottest thing in town. Yeah. Where, in, in Accra? Yeah, in, in Accra, Accra, at the student hostel. Student hostel. Okay. And everybody was there. It was hot and huge. How, 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 did, and you, how did you locate the student's hostel? Um, I found a place. That's the International Students Hostel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there was a hall there. They had a hall. Yeah. So I went to the authorities and asked them if I could use it. And they allowed me to use it. Hmm. And then also Association School. So those two places, we used it. You know your father's influence? Uh, no, it wasn't my father's influence. Later on, he gave me his house oh, yeah. to use. Okay. But before then, I was using the student hostel. And then the Association School, uh, we were using it for weekday services when we started a church. So when uh, Mrs. Idahosa came <laughs> with these prophets from Jerusalem and my principal, they said, this thing is not a fellowship, it's a church. And I said, no, 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 no. I'm not made for church. <laughs> I love this move revival. Everybody come. Saturdays. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just come yeah, experience miracles. And yeah. You also attending. Yeah, I think Every now and then. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Everybody came. There were great yeah. miracles. Deaf ears, blind. I mean, God just moved. Wow. And I love that. And, and so uh, when I knew that I had to move it into a church, mm. I made the announcement. Mm. And the first Sunday, uh, a lot of people didn't, didn't come yeah. because they were used to going back to their yeah, churches. churches yeah. 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 And so I just felt, okay, I'm just going to keep doing it. And so, then. So you use the same venue same venue so now you added sundays to yes, the saturdays to the saturdays and um you didn't you didn't feel that you will fail uh for me failure wasn't an option at that time wow it has never his been language an his language was his language didn't admit failure say it that way ah. yeah i i i just knew that it was a challenge but how were you? How were you funded? Because there was the people, there were young people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, As a matter of fact, you know, uh, interestingly, uh, one of the people that first paid tight, that was meant something, was Bishop Dag when he was in Achimota. A student? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He brought me some money. I said, "What is it?" He said, "It's tight. God says I should bring it to you." That was the first time I received a tight. Hey. You know, at that time. Wow. <laughs> so, um, so it wasn't a, a, money wasn't an issue. Mm -hmm. You know, even though we needed money, yeah. I, I never saw money as an issue. I just believed that, just doing what God said and taking God at His word. And how did you buy your instruments? I, I didn't even remember. People just gave. We 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 got instruments. Everything mm -hmm. we needed came. Wow. You know, and uh, if there was a need, I told the people, and uh, God provided. 
Mm. And so my focus was never instruments and anything. It was just uh, preaching the word and mm. letting the people have an experience. And I think that was the issue. When people have an experience, there is nothing they will not do. Nothing can stop them. So your central theme when you started the church in terms of your messages was, was what? Was faith. And uh, that is putting your faith into action, taking God at his word, and, and also the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. You know, not just what we were told or what we've read from the Bible, mm -hmm. but that the Holy Spirit is still at work today like he was in the days of the, book of, the books of And Acts. they didn't consider you too radical at the time? I, I was considered radical by so many churches. Yeah. I don't want to go into that. <laughs> you know, and... Uh, this is me trying to draw it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was considered as radical yeah. and... Uh, 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 it was even gazetted by some organizations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. 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 And mm -hmm. that um, some of the... Um, some of the secondary schools, you know, where we received notices uh, not to entertain him in the scripture. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So how long did it take for you to come out of the student's hostel? Uh, I, I, I can't remember how many yeah. years it took, okay. but we were there for a while. Then we were at the, uh, we were also at the associate school. Then after a while, suddenly it, it broke, it broke forth. Hmm. And so my father uh, came to one of the services, and when he saw the moves of God and the miracles, he was convinced uh, that God had called me, because in the beginning he felt that this guy was playing a game. And but when he started, your father oh, yeah, yeah, he didn't believe in whatever I was doing, you know. Uh, Why? Uh, for whatever reason, I mean, he, was, um, he wasn't born again. Okay. So whatever I was doing was new. Okay. He hadn't seen that before, so he felt like, what is this? tongues like one day he called all my siblings and he said I should stop that language I'm speaking in the night <laughs> you know and he told me that if you don't stop that language move out of my house so everything was new to him he yeah. wasn't used to it you yeah. see yeah. so after a while he gave me his property at the airport residential area where the diplomatic shop is now mm -hmm. so that was where but uh, at which point were you at the uh, teachers hall after that we, we grew as time went on we grew Mm -hmm. And uh, we outgrown the diplomatic shop, mm -hmm. so we moved to the teacher's home. Mm -hmm. We started two services there, mm -hmm. and uh, we outgrown that place, so we had to go to the trade fair. Mm -hmm. And it just kept growing, 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 growing. Wow. And, uh, and then from the trade fair, we came here. Wow, wow. So, Papa, again, in terms of the, you know, you preach faith, um, you know, faith in action, believing God, and things like that. And prosperity. And prosperity. prosperity. Yeah. And I was actually going to come to yeah. that. The two things you And you should also look at what was preceding. Mm -hmm. You know, this was very new when it came. Faith and prosperity mm. was new. What the church knew, especially even in the charismatic renewal movement, mm -hmm. it was prayer, holiness, prophecy. But mm. the, when he came, it was. It, it, it was, I thought he was now given an ex expression mm. and he was bringing definition, mm. you know, to faith. I mean, uh, people were defining faith, but they were defining faith in a very limiting manner, you okay. know, and they were uh, uh, determining faith in terms of the will of God, which was, uh, which was a little bit tightening, which, which was trapping, you know, it wasn't really um, what it was. Yeah. It was limiting. But when he came in life, he said, my goodness, the just shall live by his faith. And some of the things that were saying, with the accompanying manifestations, you know, it was like, uh, all the young people started asking questions. And the question was, uh-huh, what was I being told over there? Mm. You know, mm. so if, was it just prayer? Was it just prayer? Prayer? You know, no, there was something more than that. But the uh, charismatic in one movement that was there was, Prayer, fasting, uh, prophecy. prophecy, and holiness. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is so. We can go to uh, an all night, and they'll pray for about three, four hours, and they'll prophesy for one and a half hours, mm -hmm. and they'll do praises for another uh, hour or so. And there was very little, I mean, preaching of the word. There was very, very little preaching of the word. Even when the word was being preached, we were all looking forward towards uh, the prayer time and the prophecy time you know but then he came and said now let's take 
this thing out of the of the, these four corners, this limitation. Mm. What about faith? And one of the first things that he said is that the just shall live by his faith. That word was one of the characteristic of him. The just shall live by his faith. So he said the just shall live by his prayer. The just shall live by his preaching. The just shall live by his holiness. He said the just shall live by his faith. And then we began to see works. Some of these works were there, but the 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 outburst, you know, the the the, the level of, I mean, uh, what the the mega mm -hmm. dimension of it, and the fact that young people could do it. This mm. was what he kept telling us: you can also do it. You can also mm. do it. Mm. You know, and that energized people that energized to get. Them. But at this point, you had all these para church. Yeah. Um, which you also experienced. Yeah. Can you walk us through some of them yeah. briefly? Yeah, um, I, I came from uh, Calvary Road Incorporated, and um, that was, you know, prior to us, one of the uh, fellowships that was that was more like Joyful Way Incorporated. Now, Joyful Way uh, was more evangelical, mm -hmm. but Calvary Road, when we came in, it was like people were then asking us to be like Joyful Way. But I rebelled against it. I said, we need our own identity. We need our own definitions. <laughs> I say rebelled. Uh, yes, yes. I mean, it was, uh, we used to call it holy rebellion. <laughs> you know, but, yeah. <laughs> because you're, you're picking notes from the action, uh, well, action I mean, uh, fire. Yeah. And so we, 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 we broke uh, the boundaries of limitations that we have. We just broke it. And then we began to experience things like we're, we're doing village outreaches. I mean, we go to Adamode. And uh, the, the big the, the town with and the you biggest the students, the, second well, students. students. Yes, I mean, look, we, by form two, form three, we we're going around with guitars, mm. dormitory to dormitory, singing, and then witnessing. Dumb and, broadcast. Yeah, and dumb broadcast. And in dumb broadcast, in those days, I mean, you we just go, you stand this place, and then the next person will move. If he doesn't hear your voice, you also start there. And we had some very, very horrible experiences, like people uh, throwing, uh, still urine into our mouths. Yeah, so you don't know whether oh, to why? say Jesus. Oh, I mean, because we're disturbing they them. They don't believe God. Uh, no, we were disturbing them. Oh, I, mean, I don't. Yeah, yeah. 4 a.m., you, you are preaching behind somebody's window. Yeah. <laughs> person can't sleep. So but but the, the energy was there. The energy was the there. Zeal. The zeal. The zeal was there. Yeah. And, yeah. And, uh, and, and quite, it also made us do okay. quite a so number of mistakes. Carberry Road. You yeah, have Calvary the joyful Road. way. Yeah. So it was um, Calvary Road. later, Abundant yeah. Life. Abundant yeah. Life was in tech. Yeah. But yeah. Calvary Road then went almost everywhere. And wherever we were going, we needed this man, <laughs> you know, to front. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Papa, got, you, you worked with... Yeah, yeah, yeah I worked yeah. with them. So we, 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 we went to, for example... But that's it, when, uh, uh, not to take you back, uh, Reverend Spencer... Duncan, Duncan was also associated yeah. with Calvary yeah, he was, Road. He was associated he came with later. the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. But so Red was, Action was already established oh, yeah. before he came. Oh, you I know, see. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But then I remember uh, the, the tech uh, uh, crusade. I mean, that was a mega. Which year would this be? We're talking of probably 1987. No, 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 no. No, 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 way before. 1982, 83. Mm -hmm. No, it was 81. 81. Yes, that was the time my daughter was born. And yes, I was yes, born. yes. 81. You know, 81. Yeah. And and K, that, uh, in, in UST. In KUST. Yeah. I mean, it was. And that also, it, it broke. Oh, the, but you are young. The, 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 <laughs> oh. <laughs> trying to reconcile his I, age I remember and when he came. I mean, doing. where he stayed, you know, because he stayed in Queens Hall. That's it. The teachers, um, the uh, TS resident, that was uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, Emily. Yeah, Emily. Yeah. Emily's, yeah. Uh, 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 TA's, uh, what do we call yeah, it? Yeah, the, 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 the cubicle. Yeah, the, 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 the hostel, are flat. Yeah, they are flat. flat. Yeah. Yes, on the other they, side of Queen's Hall. Yes, yeah. on, of Queen's Hall. So those are. And no, it I was, was in Queen's Hall. So uh, yeah, Mama well. Katangi, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and at that time, it was. I mean, we, we built something in, 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 in tech. I mean, it was. It was a, a breakout. Wow. But we needed this face, you know, that would bring some, you know, Energy, emphasis. And, yeah. then, and he came there. 
with demonstrations, it, it, it was a very, very powerful service. I remember it was with George Ferguson Lane, yeah. you know, and then, um, oh, man. and then, uh, oh, blessed Ferguson memory. Lane taught, uh, yeah. one of the Kenneth Hagin, yeah, uh, this things, and then, uh, uh. Uh, Spencer Duncan, uh, uh, yeah, Spencer Spencer Duncan. Spencer. I remember yeah. uh, Prophet Stephen with the prophet uh, with the tongues in a windele, a windele, and then he began to <laughs> <laughs> interpretation. Do I remember it at all? And it was, wow. but the emphasis was on him. And so, that Saturday so night. Tell me, how were you traveling in terms of transportation? How were you? By road. By road. State transport. You, you used to take STC? Yeah, 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 yeah a lot. Hey. <laughs> this matter. Yeah. So right. you're not driving like, you know. No, no, I didn't have a car at that time. You take the many years and you were doing all these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was the revival <sighs> at Tech that broke out into Legon and broke out into Kivas. Yes, yeah. I, I remember all the people, for example, during the Tech revival. You remember some of the names. I remember some like Augustine Nigeria. One of them is a bishop in your, what's her name? Um, she's married to um, she's married to the minister, former minister. No, no, no. Uh, Ajauto. Okay. The, she was not at that time. She was Ajauto before <laughs> she became. I mean, uh, they came. Uh, Gesnina Jaga then came to take to come and find out what was going on because they were hearing. I do it in Legon, right? They were in Legon. Oh, okay. I remember that night, in, right in my in my in my room. And then they went back to uh, Legon and it broke out. And I remember telling Augustina that what is happening here can also happen mm. in Legon. So they went to Legon, boom. Then mm. Kivas people would but come. But she later joined Action, right? Yeah, no, they were all in Action. Yeah, yeah. Right. There, was no, there was no and church. Assistance, yeah. Yeah. There was no Angela church. And there, the was rest, no, yeah. there was no charismatic church. There was no charismatic church. Mm. Uh, the only charismatic church that I uh, but had this name was Liberty uh, Valley Temple. But it wasn't doing... Okay, I don't Too know. Well, because, know I mean, yeah. there was a few mm. crises. That was a uh, Reverend Sifasamati. But when you are talking of... Oh, uh, Reverend Sifas had a yeah, church. Shepard, yes. Sifas yeah, came Valley after. Valley Temple. Yeah, Sifas came after. Yeah. But came then, after so, me. this was it. Listen, uh, Reverend Dr. Bob and Piakofi, action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Reverend Dr. Menzel and Tabela also came to action. Oh, he came to action? Yes, for he a visited a few times. Yeah, he wasn't a, a member. Times. Wasn't right. a member. Yeah. He, when he, he used to, to live with uh, Ampia Kofi. Yes. In Kanda, right? So, in Kanda, yeah. yeah. Mm. But he wasn't a member. Yeah. But what we all did. Yeah, I mean, it's, it was I, the, I, the whole for, experience. For example, was I wasn't even a member of action. Mm -hmm. I would visit a few times. Yeah. But we cannot say that we never sat. Oh, yeah. Action. We cannot yeah. say that we never yeah. sat there. We yeah. sat there. So it was like a movement at the time. I mean, all of us. I'll come to you quickly before we take our break. The, the whole thing about prosperity was, Duncan Williams, prosperity. What was the message of prosperity? Okay. Uh, the message of prosperity um, was very simple and clear that God wants us to have sufficiency in all things, that we may abound to every good work, and that Prosperity that doesn't reflect in the life of others is poverty. <laughs> and therefore, when you talk about prosperity, it's a tool and a weapon God has given to his people to fulfill the great mandate and to work the works of God. And I think that is, it was taken out of context because a lot of people yeah. misunderstood what I was saying. Mm. And, and a lot of people also abused it. You know, okay. but my understanding was prosperity or money or wealth is a, is a tool that God has given. He said, the silver is mine, the gold is mine. The cattle on a thousand hills is mine, say the Lord. So God created wealth uh, as a tool and a weapon to do good with it. Uh, it's, it it's, it's a weapon, it's a vehicle. W without prosperity or money, you can't accomplish anything. It's a vehicle mm -hmm. through which we give expression to God's purposes for our lives and also to deliver or fulfill the duty for which we have come into the kingdom for such a time like this. But a lot of people uh, saw it differently because most of the established churches in those days didn't have to raise money from here and even they, they didn't have to receive offerings or tithes. Where were they getting money from? from, from they were getting offerings, but they're not getting tithes. Yeah, okay. but, but even the offerings. Yeah. Funding, yeah. funding. Yeah, yeah. 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 they didn't dwell yeah. that much it on it because coins. everything it came coins. from 
everything came from their mother churches. Oh, I so see. they were funded from abroad. But for, for me, um, uh, as the first charismatic church, uh, there was no funding from everywhere. It mm. was, uh, nothing came from anywhere. So I have to go to the people for every need to let them know that this is the need, this is what we need, and encourage people to give, and, and ask people to make commitments to give. And, and I also did tell them that God blesses us to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. And so if, mm -hmm. if, you, if, if you bless the house, you'll be blessed. So you True. can keep being a blessing. Yeah. And people started giving out of their little, and God was blessing. Mm -hmm. I mean, these were students. Yeah. And it's amazing how yeah. God was blessing them. They started getting good jobs, traveling outside, and they were supporting the work. They would buy organ instruments and things, and they were doing things because they were experiencing the blessing. So it wasn't even just what I was preaching or teaching. They had an experience of it, and they themselves would go out of their way and bring monies and bring seed and tithe, and they were, they were experiencing it. But after a while, there was a lot of abuse because people weren't very clear, yeah. you know? They yeah. weren't very clear about prosperity, and they didn't understand that prosperity is not for you, okay. but it's for the work of the ministry and for the benefit of others. All right, yes. so this is the voice of Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams and Reverend Dr. Mama Marque. We are talking about the faith movement, the charismatic movement. We'll take a short break. When we come back, I just want them to identify some of what we now consider the excesses and how we we corrected them or how we we hope to correct um, going forward um, which will also now eventually lead us to the new dispensation or what we're experiencing now everybody says they are prophets and prophetic 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 i don't know maybe they can tell us we'll take a short break this is footprints welcome back this is footprints and I have Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. Yes, Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams and Reverend Dr. Mama Marque here. And um, we're just working on the on the footprints in the in the whole faith movement and charismatic um, um, mission in Ghana. So we 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 talked about faith. We talked about um, prosperity and. Admittedly, there, some people took it to some levels that really uh, we could not sustain or, or, or didn't live up to expectations. Now, how did you, how did you manage that? Because, you see, you were, you were actually in the line of fire. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. everybody claimed that they were part of it until mm -hmm. somebody lifted a cane mm -hmm. and then they went down. And it had to be Duncan Williams, mm -hmm. um, you know, <laughs> biting mm -hmm. the bullet. Yeah. How did you deal with this? If you study history carefully uh, and dispensations, excesses always is That's part it. of That's uh, it. everything yeah. new. Church age. You know, mm. if you look at the church ages, yeah. you know, everything. Yeah. Uh, if you look yeah. at the Azusa Street yeah. revival, you know, the yeah. baptism of the Holy yeah. Spirit. Catholic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. It was. Yeah. The yeah. Wesleyan revival. Mm -hmm. It was. I mean, hey. So is this hu the human element? It's a human uh, uh, element or factor or, or what we call the fallen nature of man. Okay. That when something new begins uh, until revelation, because revelation is progressive. Yeah. Mm. So until, until uh, the Bible says, in thy light shall we see light. And in. Uh, in the entrance of thy word give it life and understanding to the simple. So it takes it's progressive and it takes time to appreciate and to and to bring in the balance. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, there were a lot of excesses. Mm -hmm. And again, like you said, um, fingers were always pointed at me, even by the then government. I was arrested and uh, uh, I was charged, you know, and uh, uh, there were assassination attempts, all kinds oh, of really? things. Oh, yeah, 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 you know. Mm -hmm. On my life, I was picked up by BNI. I was under investigation for two years. Uh, they said I was uh, taking advantage of the people. You know, there were all kinds of charges because so many things were happening at that time that shouldn't have happened. 
and uh, it oh, was so they, 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 they were investigating you for what? Um, oh, this will be uh, under the PNDC. Yeah, under the not, PNDC. Not the democracy. No, 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 no under yeah. the PNDC, and it had to do with... Uh, also, I wasn't wise at that time with a lot of things and how I handled a lot of things. Yeah. You know, some of my statements okay. and utterances, you yeah. know. At that time, you know, was full of zeal without wisdom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or knowledge. Uh, mm -hmm. Things weren't managed well at that time. And because I was under a lot but of persecution. Still young, man. I was young. And because I was under a lot of persecution and attack, I reacted to too many things. Mm. You know, and I think that was very, very wrong. You know, for me at that time, the reaction was too much. Uh, there were things that, with time, the dust settles and the water found its level, level and yeah. then the curtains were brought down. Mm. And uh, with hindsight, you know, when I reflect, I realized that there were some things that I just had to let it go yeah. and just let time and maturity fix it. Mm. And as time went on, illumination came, you know. Uh, mm. People were able to make sense of a lot of things that uh, they struggled with, you know, at that time, you know. And so um, I had to also appreciate that a lot of people who were abusing uh, the move mm -hmm. uh, at that time uh, meant well but they lack knowledge mm. you know they were full of zeal but they lack knowledge and some of them i try to talk to them to explain things to them and some listen and others didn't but you just have to let it go because um, so this would now take us into the 80s yeah, yeah. the mid 80s to the late 80s is that mm -hmm. correct yeah. Yeah. Uh, and reverend so in within that movement which which were some of the churches that sprang, sprang out no First of all, let me just add a little bit to okay. it. Um, there were certain excesses, for example, the, the excesses of I mean, abuse of faith. They can claim it. So somebody's wearing a shoe, you know, somebody's wearing a shoe. And then you see my shoe, and they say, in the name of Jesus, I possess this shoe. I claim it. So I have to take it off. I mean, and somebody tried to do that to me, and I told the person, tell God it's the only shoe I have. <laughs> I mean, and then the, also, you know, um, uh, certain abuses for the abuse of, of, of the gift of prophecy. I mean, where people, uh, a young man goes to church and he sees a young girl, he wants to propose to her, and propose to, through tongues. Ah, uh, so, so, Tongues so, and interpretation. Uh, tongues and interpretation. He speaks so, tongues. Yeah, yeah, so and he says, so, the Lord. Yeah, he's talking. the Lord. And, and it was, we had a very funny experience where <laughs> this boy just then gets up and maybe, uh, you, you are called Mary, let's just yeah, yeah. for a moment. Yeah. I know you are straight, but... Oh, no, I mean, uh, Brad Mary. Yeah, yeah Brad Mary. <laughs> <laughs> And then the guy just speaks in tongues and says, yeah, my daughter, my daughter, Mary, I, the Lord, I'm moving today on your behalf. I'm about to give you something, a gift, and then he mentioned his name. I give, I give my son, my son, my son, my son to you. And then, and then the lady opened, popped up her eyes with me like, huh? And when he finished, uh, I mean, uh, prophesy, and then she also came in and then said, you know, la 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 la, my brother, my, uh, my son, my, my son, my son, John, I, the Lord, I've just changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so first of all, there was the abuse of gifts, mm, yeah. mm -hmm. and then there was abuse of teaching. You yeah. know, because certain yeah. teachings were uh, rather extrapolated into into error. Well, um, I will come back to this one. I mean, we're just rounding up, but um, I'll still talk about what Duncan Williams represented and how the persecution um, affected your ministry. Because today, when you talk about persecution, I'm not so sure whether young people are able to put it in context. Mm -hmm. You know, because people speak freely and do everything freely, mm -hmm. and you know. So, in in your own experience, what was the real danger and the persecution that you experienced in the 80s? Mm -hmm. Rejection. Lots of rejection. Mm -hmm. uh, misrepresentation that uh, character assassination mm. being misunderstood and, and a lot of betrayals because at a point uh, a lot of people who came to my services and my meetings uh, but they weren't members and some two who became members uh, they all felt that they could do what I was doing so there was a lot of breakaway all over the place and mm. everybody was doing similar things and yeah. They were also uh, 
they, 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 they had the opportunity to improve on what I was doing. Some of them. Yeah, to do better because they saw some of my loopholes and mistakes mm -hmm. here and there, and they were able to come up uh, with systems, okay. you know, uh, to improve on what I was doing, to do better. And then they started fighting me mm. and trying to say that I missed it and um, I wasn't doing the right thing. And so it was very painful and it was very difficult because <clears throat> they were pulling people from my churches, mm. from my church to their churches. You know, that you don't need Duncan Williams, uh, come to us, we are young. And, um, and they criticized me and said things that uh, just to put me down and to uh, deceive uh, the simple-minded people. And they succeeded. They did well until the time when others find out that these people were in real and their motives was wrong and they were doing something to it was more about themselves than the kingdom uh, and so they came back so uh, basically it was more of rejection mm -hmm. being misrepresented being misunderstood and um, a lot of people didn't understand where I was coming from and the betrayal also was more from within. From within. You know, within it was, the church. Yeah, yeah, it was more from brethren and others who felt like they could do better than me. Mm. And they felt that they've come from university and everything and they, they could read. And uh, at that time also you had E.W. Kenyon and uh, uh, kind of Hagen books and people could read them and, yeah. and they came up with some proofs like having just downloaded some information into them and uh, <laughs> this Duncan Williams guy don't know what it's about and all that yeah, so yeah, um, yeah. it was very challenging mm. you know and um, there were a lot of times where I was discouraged you know yeah, about yeah. about the movement mm. and the betrayal but um, as time went on and I mature I understood that it comes with the territory good 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 Papa, thank you very much. We will draw the curtains on this episode. This has been Footprint with Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams and Reverend Ebenezer Mama Marque. And um, it's just walking through the paths, uh, the footprints, charismatism, faith movement, um, the, the, the messages that they used to preach and where we are. We will definitely have another episode in continuation, but for now, Thanks for joining. My name is Samuel Atamensa. Bye.